Well, good Thursday evening. Welcome to Buffalo Wild Wings here in Tiffin, Ohio, home of the Tiffin University Dragons. So see this way. Hello, welcome in Tiffin University Dragon Football Coach Gary Goff Show, coming to you live from Buffalo Wild Wings right here in Tiffin, Ohio. My name is Russ Snyder, the voice of the Dragons, alongside Tiffin University head coach Gary Goff. Hello, coach. Welcome to a Thursday night in Tiffin, Ohio, Buffalo Wild Wings. How you doing, Russ? I'm all right. Not too bad myself. So we're going to talk a little bit about last week's game, talk about this week's game with Ashland coming in. A uh, very good football team. You faced a pretty darn good football team last week as well. And we'll talk to one of your student athletes, one of your coaches too. But, and we'll also talk about uh, – it's pink week here on campus everything going on we'll talk about what's going on with your football team on saturday as well it's a 1 30 kickoff at frost Cow now stadium this saturday as the dragons will welcome in ashland for our uh, another key gliac contest but first coach let's take a look back at this past saturday that's a uh, Harking back to Detroit and Wayne State University, and the Dragons went up there and took on a team that I think maybe, from what I've seen so far this year, may be the most improved team in the conference from what we saw last year from what we saw this year. Well, I don't know how improved they are. They've always been a very good program. Sure. But, um, you know, they're, they're definitely going to be one of the best programs in the conference. They're going to be right up there with the uh, Grand Valley and Ashland. You know, they, they barely lost that game to Ashland several weeks ago. Yeah. But, you know, we knew going up there there's going to be a hard-fought game. You know, we've had their number the last two years. And, um, you know, things didn't quite go our way last Saturday. But, you know, they're, they're a great football team, and they're going to uh, win a quite a few games. Well, they are what they are, aren't they? I mean, they run the football, and uh, they got a bunch of big – their running backs are pretty good-sized fellas uh, – Romello Brown, one of the bigger running backs you're going to find in the, country, in the country, not alone in our conference. But uh, you just looking at him up there in the uh, press box. You saw down the field. That's just one big – that's that's a man out there playing football. He was very big, very fast, and very strong. You know, we <laughs> yeah. had trouble tackling him all day long. But, you know, everybody they've played has. I mean, right. He's mm -hmm. a very good football player. And, you know, he, he plays behind an offensive line that is a, a veteran offensive line, senior heavy, and they're probably one of the most athletic offensive lines we've seen so far and probably be the most athletic we've seen all year. Well, the, he's not the only running back. Demetrius Stinson, another very talented running back for that team, got the uh, scoring started early in the first quarter with a touchdown, uh, touchdown run off a 67 yard drive but your kids came right back and answered after the first two drives I told Matt I said we may be able to race to 50 here today this afternoon but uh, second uh, drive of the game Dragons first drive of the game Jordan Nobles a six yard pass from Antonio Pipkin after a nine play 65 yard drive and only two minutes and 45 seconds I'm sure you were pretty happy seeing you know you give up the quick early score but your kids came right back even to score up and then moved on from there yeah it was a great drive for us offensively got all the way down there and then uh, Antonio made a great pass to the back corner for Jordan Nobles and um, you know tie the game up right there um, and from that point on I, th I thought our, our defense really settled in um, you know and, and started to play ball um, but kind of back and forth there for a few series. Yeah that's the first points I think Wayne State's given up in the first quarter all season they only given up six points in the first half if I remember correctly so your Dragons topped that but it's the only score the Dragons were able to muster in the first half and then the next time the Dragons scored was in the fourth quarter I mean, there was three touch there's three scoring drives in the fourth quarter two of which were by Tiffin and Kyle Brunson a four yard touchdown pass from Antonio Pipkin a six play 80 yard drive and again in only a minute 18 I think that was Brunson's first TD reception as a college football player isn't it? I, I think, think he had so a, he had two rushing he had a couple before, rushing yeah. yeah that was his third touchdown but yeah another six play and 80 yard drive to get the uh, scoring going early in the uh, fourth quarter then the final scoring of the ball game also came from the Dragons as Trent Stom a 29 yard pass from Antonio Pipkin a five play 75 yard drive in a minute and 42 seconds yeah you know we had a crucial mistake to start the third quarter right there we, we we uh, just ran a wrong route and uh, really hurt us, turned the ball over right there to start and put our defense in a, in a very tough situation. And uh, Wayne State was able to capitalize on it. So, um, you know, right there in the second half, you know, we, we felt like we were always in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really thought that third quarter defensively did a great job Absolutely. of adjusting and, and slowing them down. Offensively, we didn't do a great job right there in the third quarter. And then the fourth quarter, we got back on the board and started moving the ball again. So, you know, it's kind of a, a, a tale of two games right there. We, we didn't get both sides on the same page. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we got to be able to do that, especially playing a great team like Ash in this upcoming week. Uh, freshman kicker we talked about, Owen Courtright. I thought he was fantastic kicking the ball off for your for your team on, on uh, Saturday. Something he's greatly improved from earlier on the season to there, but he was, I mean, if you can get that kind of, uh, you know, deep, the depth on the kickoffs, everything was either in the end zone or right in front of the goal line. I thought he did a really nice job for you. Yeah, he handed all three phases there Saturday, you know, kick it off, uh, you know, extra point, and then punting. Mm -hmm. And it's just game reps. You know, he's, he's yeah. a young kid. you got to remember just this time last year, he was in his fifth high school game right, you know, as right, a senior. Right. So, 
you know, I think he's got his uh, jitters out of the way as far as kicking, and he's going to be a great kicker. He might be one of the better in the conference as we look up in two to three years. Yeah, I thought he really improved greatly. And some of our listeners, we had a chance to ask you about this for the show tonight, Coach, but some of our listeners, some of our viewers, Heard during the during the game our call when Stephon Willis took the cleat to the face and it sounded from we from where it looked from our vantage point it didn't look very good and we had you know kind of heard worse than what it actually was. You let us know today that it wasn't as bad as originally thought and he was actually able to practice all week. You know there was there was two crazy things that happened in the game and that was one of them. You know he actually had a nice lane for, for the touchdown really and had a defender kind of thrown in his way and he got kicked perfectly right between the face mask. Yeah. And it broke his nose. But um, we found out later that he's fine. His nose wasn't quite broken like they thought it was. Right. Um, you know, he had to sit out the rest of that game. But, you know, we, we got to have that young man on the field. He's a great player for us. And uh, he's healthy this week. He's practiced all week. So we're, we're very excited to have him back Saturday. But, you know, the ball just didn't bounce our way there Saturday. You know, we blocked a punt. And yeah, the punt rolls 60 yards and pins us, you know, inside the 10. So is that just, the other crazy uh, thing you were talking about? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, we mentioned that during the broadcast. You know, it was, it's bad luck, and good luck, no luck, really, because you know you get in there and you get to that punt, you get your big paws up there, the punt is blocked, and then that top spin it takes hits, and then boy, just took off rolling. I mean, well, we really thought that do? during the game, we thought you know maybe we should have fielded that and had a chance with it, but when you go back and look at film, there's no way we could have fielded that. They had two defenders in front of our returner right there, but you know it was just kind of watching that ball slowly roll towards oh, the end zone was uh, pretty painful. Yeah, well, we mentioned uh, the Stefan and him coming back healthy which is great news how about the health of the team otherwise <laughs> exiting the game I don't mean to laugh coach when I talk to you about it because they say if you don't have bad luck sometimes you don't have any luck at all and when it comes to keeping the kids healthy you haven't had any good luck at all this year well you know it's you know we're almost at the midway point and um you know we're like a lot of teams you yeah. know we're banged and bruised in a lot of different areas but you know we're hoping to get some guys back and uh move forward but you know we've had some young guys that are you know, been thrown into some positions and have really played extremely well you know and you know, Davon Johnson's done a great job for us, yeah. and I think he's going to be a really, really good receiver for many years here. But, um, you know, we had no idea that he'd be thrown right into the fire this, right. this soon. And then we've talked every week about the two freshman running backs. They're, they're phenomenal players. They they would have played even if, you know, we didn't have any injuries. They're just uh -huh. that talented. But, um, you know, it's it's football, and uh, that's part of it. Yes, and sir. if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely right. Talk about something. You mentioned the freshman and running backs. Talk about uh, just the freshman and how they've made that adaption from the high school to the college. Although is it slowing down a little bit for the freshmen now? Are they getting a little bit more adjusted to the college game? How are they reacting to oh, it? Oh, absolutely. You know, things are definitely slowing down for them. You know, the, we got the two redshirt uh, freshman offensive linemen playing, and, um, you know, they played some of their best ball the last several weeks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they're minimizing their mistakes, which is encouraging. And then two running backs, obviously they're very talented. But, you know, with Davon Johnson, we got uh, Daylon Wynn, it's a true freshman playing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a unique group of freshmen actually that are playing that are kind of feeding off of each other you know it's kind of they're all from the same area they're close friends and it's kind of with they've all got the attitude oh that was a good play but watch mine okay you know so it's very encouraging they're feeding off of each other and um those guys are only going to continue to get better this season and, and throughout their career so you know we're, we're very thankful we got them uh we had no intention of playing them all this early <laughs> but hey that that's that's the way the ball uh, was, bounces sometimes i was gonna say the experience is gonna pay all big dividends for these kids as they work their way through their career but it's unwanted experience right now for these young men because as you said, they're still making that adjustment, but sometimes you got to learn, you know, by the by the fire. And you know, these kids are thrown into the football game, and you got to react when you get out there, and you got to play football. And this weekend it doesn't get any easier, but it's great to see them at least reacting in a positive manner. Oh, and they're a lot of fun to coach too. They yes. all got great personalities, and they have not backed down from a challenge at all. And um, they can take coaching. They they all come from really good high school programs, so you can tell they've been coached hard. And um, you know, so we're we're. Like I said, we're extremely happy we've got them, and they're playing for us, and uh, they're going to be great players. Well, it just goes back to the character kids that you like to bring in here to play football for you at Tiffany University. It's always nice to see those character kids also excelling on the football field in their athletic ventures as well. Well, coming in this weekend, the coach is Ashland. How many schools in the country? I mean, I wish I would have time to look this up, but uh, how many schools in the country have faced two top four teams on their schedule this early on? I'm not sure, but don't look it up because I don't want to feel bad if we're one of the only few <laughs> that's done that. So. I, I can't imagine there's been many more. Yeah, no, they, um, you know, they don't they don't give the four, fourth ranked you know team mm -hmm. that for no reason. They are very very talented on, on both sides of the ball. 
Uh, they they create some issues, you know, in, in their run game, their passing game, on defense, and they're playing zone. They're they're blitzing you, pressuring you. I mean, they kind of do a little bit of everything, it seems like. But um, you know, they're a great team. You know, I think they've lost basically two games in two years, and both those are playoff games. Right. Absolutely. So we're gonna have our hands full come Saturday, but. You know, we've had a great week of practice, and, uh, you know, we, we intend on going out there and competing. And if we play hard for four quarters, anything's possible. That's why we play it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, n- nobody uh, nobody gave Duke a chance last week at Notre Dame, did they? No, no. <laughs> they went out and got the job done, right? It's all about getting the job done on the field. And Their offense is different than most offenses in our conference and teams that we play. Is that they, You know, their passing game goes through their tight end, and that's a little bit different from what we've seen. And kid is not he's 6'6 277 pounds so he's got to pose some kind of uh, some kind of challenges to your defense is some different scheming that has to happen or you just play your base and make sure everybody's in the right place at the right time and take care of it that way you know, I really can't answer that you know that you no. can give me a general question well, I tell you, he, he is a talent he is a uh, NFL prospect um, you know a, a guy that big and can run that well mm-hmm. and he's got great hands he was a division one basketball player that transferred oh. to him several years ago so um, when you see him Saturday you'll understand why but you know he does create some matchup problems and they will split him out as a number one receiver and then they'll put him down as a tight end and move him all around but um you you got to know where he's at but you know he's not the only threat on that side of the sure. ball their quarterback is a gunslinger and he is he's a guy that you can hit him time and time again and he's making some throws downfield and, and you don't know how you know so he's very talented he's obviously a, a gutsy player and a, and a good leader and uh then you know of course set back there in the backfield you know he, he runs the ball like behind here behind one of the best offense linemen in the conference so you know that's that's why they're fourth in the country right now um you know they went up to ferris last week and and played an unbelievable game against ferris so mm-hmm. <clears throat> they're talented and, and we know that but you know i guess you know one thing we can say is we've played two other very very talented teams yes, in, yeah. in grand valley and and wayne state now and don't forget you know hillsdale i was just going to say the, the same thing look what hillsdale did last week with their game at michigan tech but up 51 points against tech talk about a little bit of uh, Ashland on the defensive side of the ball from my experience in covering the dragons they usually have a couple mean guys up there on the, on the front in the defensive line i think they have a couple guys actually playing in the league right now is it more of the same big guys up front good tacklers yeah you know up front they're big strong and athletic uh their linebackers are your, your prototypical gliac linebackers big and strong you know and, and they like to defend the run and they don't ask them to do a whole lot more than that than defend the run because their safeties are very involved um in their run game and in their passing game right there and so you know secondary is very talented you know and and they're almost all back from a year ago and uh you know they went you know to the playoffs you know a year ago and lost in the first round of grand valley but you know they are uh have very few weak spots mm-hmm. you know on both sides mm-hmm. of the ball so you know once again we got to protect the football at all costs but we got to be able to get first downs and move the chain and help our defense out a little bit and keep them off the field as much as we can just because Ashton's offense is so explosive yeah it doesn't matter how good they are what they do on either side of the football it all breaks down to what the dragons do and if the dragons do what they're supposed to do then we'll we'll roll the dice and see what happens you know and we've had a great week of practice our our Team spirit's been up. Everybody's been running around working hard and excited to show up to work every day. So, you know, still, we're, we're excited about our team, and uh, we, we feel like we're going to have a great season. We just got to continue to work hard and enjoy the process. You know, it's not going to happen overnight, mm-hmm. and we got to worry about being 1-0 this week, not about what the final record is at the end of the oh, season. There's still a whole lot of football to play. Even after this week, we're not even halfway through it yet. Right. So, all kinds of football to play. We're going to bring up one of your uh, student-athletes here in a little bit, a gentleman who I'm sure will be lined up across from that tight end every once in a while. His name's Willie Mays. Uh, well, invite Coach uh, Willie, or Willie Mays and Coach Lee Stocker to come up here and join us now, guys. So go ahead and make your way up here. And uh, let's talk about Willie Mays here a little bit while he's walking up. Talk about the uh, recruiting process when you brought that young man in here. And what made you think he'd be a good fit with your Tiff University Dragons? Well, we like the name to start with. You know, sure. Willie Mays, we figured you know, he must have I figured he'd have gloves. And every time he uh, every time he's got a sack, he'd staple on the wall like <laughs> Willie Mays Hayes did back in the Major League. I don't know. No, he, he's from California. He's a junior college transfer. And, um, you know, Willie was a lot of fun to recruit. You know, we we first got him here when he first enrolled it snowed just a little bit and he was so excited he didn't have a winter jacket or anything and <laughs> Willie runs outside and makes a snowman and he sends me a picture he's like coach you gotta look at this my first ever snowman the snowman looked like E.T. Nice. <laughs> it was the worst snowman I've seen in my life. Well, inexperience, of course. Right? Obviously. But as I, I think snowman, he's better at it. After, as I say, has your snowman years, creation gotten better? 
<laughs> no, but Willie, Willie's a great young man. He's got a lot of talent. He's worked extremely hard in the offseason. You know, he put on a good 30-plus pounds, and um, he's having a great season so far. Made some great plays, especially last week against that talented offensive line at, at Wayne State. But, um, you know, I know Coach Stalker's having a blast coaching him, and uh, we're, we're excited to have him. Well, Willie, thanks for coming on the program. Appreciate you being here. Uh, thanks uh, for being here and part, being part of the Tiffany University Dragon football program. And Coach Stocker, thank you so much for joining us here as thank well. You. Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, about uh, Willie as uh, Coach talked about the recruiting process. Why don't you talk a little bit about him and the day-to-day -day work on the practice field? Willie's a great guy to coach. I mean, he's the guy that comes in every day, day in, day out, ready to work. And Coach alluded to it as a little bit. You know, the work he's put on since last season, you know, gained about 30 pounds in the offseason, stayed all summer and trained with us. And he's been a, a good, a huge part to why our D-line has improved. Mm -hmm. You know, had a lot of mentorship with the younger guys, you know, him and another senior and Jalen Randolph, and has helped us get where we are today. You know, and I'm really, really proud to see where he's come since his first day here at Tiffin a year ago. All right, Willie, let's talk to you now for a little bit. Let's talk, uh, first of all, about your progress of getting to Tiffin. Tell us a little bit about that first time you met Coach and uh, what made it, what was it that clicked that made you think Tiffin University is a place you should come continue your football career? Well, I was blessed in coming here. Like, Coach Goff called me, offered me a scholarship, and when I visited out here, I loved it. Like, I loved the indoor, the stadium, the facilities. And two former seniors who had played the year before, and they made me feel very welcome to come here. And then the, the way the defense is run, too, I feel like it's set up for us to, su to succeed. All right. You got to understand uh, the junior college he was at pretty much overlooks the San Francisco Bay. It's beautiful. You know, so I told him, I said, hey, we've got the same view at night over the Sandusky That's River. river. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> downtown, as you overlook the river, the, the, the beautiful downtown nightlight. I mean, it's very similar, I'm sure, to the San Francisco Bay area. <laughs> Definitely. Now, <laughs> Willie was excited for the opportunity, you know, and um, he was a very strong, long, explosive guy. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people missed on him because they looked at him and said, well, he's just not big enough. You know, and uh, he's worked hard to gain that weight over the last several years, and now he he's up there with some of the best in the conference. Well, when you first came on campus, Willie, we thought you were a basketball player. <laughs> and you definitely have gotten a little thicker this year. And I think big, from last year to this year, for certain, you've actually put on uh, put on some weight, and uh, all because of uh, hard work in the weight room, and then I'm sure nutrition a part of that as well. Yes, Learning sir. how to eat. <laughs> Learning how to eat. Explain more to that. Let's, let's get into Willie here a little bit. Explain a little bit more of that, Coach Stocker. Really just eating everything. All day, yes, eating sir. everything, right? Eating so. about five, six times a day, breakfast, snack, lunch, another lunch, dinner, late night dinner. Well, you got to have a motor, right? You got to have a motor to play defensive end, and you got to have fuel for that motor to run. So well, the scary part is, coach, I can't gain all this weight. You know, I'm a great pass rusher. I won't be able to rush the passer anymore. So Willie, just gain the weight. You'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, trust and the coaching. <laughs> obviously, it still works now. Right, yes, absolutely. He was just so excited to have a, a meal plan, cafeteria, you know, some protein that he, you know, he, he couldn't get over the fact that we'd feed him all day long. <laughs> <laughs> if you're ready to eat and work, we're going to make sure you've got the fuel to work. That's for certain. Yes, all right, uh, now that you've been here at Tiffany University, talk about some of the, your uh, some of your, your favorite memories uh, on the football field or some of your favorite memories that you've had so far with maybe some of your football teammates. Well, just being here, being with my teammates is a memory. Like staying, I've stayed both summers, and both times I had a blast lifting with Coach Ison, hanging out with my teammates all the time. Like we just stayed up all night, play games, talk about the running, and how excited we are for the season coming up. Like it's just all summer we dream about the chance to have a chance to win the Grand. Had that first game circled on the calendar, counting down the days. And yes, sir. You talk, Coach. He's another one of the guys we've mentioned it before. With the, you know the kids staying here over the summer and then building that camaraderie, that teamwork. That goes a long way, especially when you get these upperclassmen. If they can show that tight bond when these young kids come in, it probably makes it easier for those kids to transition and easier for these guys to work with the younger kids. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's commitment first, and then they build trust amongst each other and with the coaching staff, obviously. But, um, you know, like you said, we've had a, a number of players go and graduate and say, you know, Coach, one of my best memories is staying for summer school, uh -huh. working out with the guys. And, you know, so that's where they, you know, kind of build some lifelong memories and some mm -hmm. lifelong friendships. Absolutely. And, uh, Willie, what's your major at Tiff University? Exercise science. And what are your plans after your uh, football playing days are done? Well, I want to try and take a shot at the league, but if not, I want to be I'm saying after that. After <laughs> that. Yeah. I want to be a physical therapist. All right. And wherever that takes you is wherever that takes you, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Coach, talk about uh, Willie. Uh, Coach Stocker, talk a little bit here about, uh, about Willie and uh, 
his work with some of these younger players. You know, we mentioned some of the upper class maybe he's worked with. Talk about how he's helped work with some of these younger kids into the mix. I think a, a, a big part of Willie is him, you know, it's his second year with us. Mm -hmm. So as he's grown in our defense and learned the system, it's been quick. It's been a quick turnover. So as he turns back to younger guys, able to mentor them, able to show them. And not that he's a finished product by any means. Trust me. Still gets still gets still makes mistakes. Right? But he has shown to, you know, quickly adapt, you know, and learn the defense inside and out to help our guys. You know, staying the whole summer helps. We had a, really our whole core of guys on the defensive line were here all summer. So again, it's time to, you know, reflect on the times they enjoyed, but also they're they're being consistent on working towards their goals. Um, but he has come along, you know, week in, week out, you know, doing what he's asked, making the plays, maybe he's shouldn't you know mm -hmm. it's all extra effort and you know extremely proud of him he's put himself in a situation to you know finish his senior year at a high level and possibly have something you know to follow yeah when we uh, we were talking earlier you know matt and i were talking earlier about willie after a coach told he was going to be on and um, you know we were mentioning when you uh when you showed up for check-in day we don't know if you were a player or one of the parents when you showed up that day. Like you, <laughs> Willie came walking. That's how much bigger we thought you had, you had looked. And right. it's all a tribute to all the hard work that you put in. You guys mentioned that all that work that uh, the kids are putting in in the summertime and how it leads into the fall. And, you know, when you got a talented group of, of, of defensive linemen out there, it probably allows you to get a little bit more creative what you're doing in the second level on the defensive oh, there, side. There's no doubt. You know, we've got a great secondary in the past two years that have obviously helps us, but we can turn right around with the athletes we have. We've made big improvements, you know, since I got here two years ago. Um, just athletically, personnel, and like you said, we are able to do a lot more things up front, mm -hmm. creativity, putting guys in situations to you know make the matchups in our favor mm -hmm. um, and it obviously it helps our defense as a whole right. so it's definitely a huge right. advantage for us now Willie who's the toughest guy to go up against in practice excuse me who's the toughest guy to go up against in practice well we go against the scout team a lot of time but <laughs> our offensive line is our best line in the world is the toughest guy to go up against in practice did you second that coach is it good to watch those two uh, go at it there in practice uh, always. I, to be honest, I'm not really watching them a whole lot yeah, unless he gets close to my quarterback. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm uh, usually watching the quarterback and downfield. But, uh, no, it, he, he's been a lot of fun to have around. Great, great personality. And uh, we're fortunate right now the defense line is one of our deepest units. And um, it's nice to keep those guys fresh and, and, and see Willie show up in the fourth quarter late in games and make some big plays for us. Who are some of the young guys on the defense, Willie, you think after your time is done at Tiffany University that you think are going to be some of the rising stars on that defensive side of the football? Well, I like to think Cody Cole, another defensive end, he's going to have a great career. And DeLon Wynn, he's mm -hmm. a corner, number 32. He's been getting uh, more reps coming up. And there's a rusher linebacker that I like. He really entertaining high highlight for him. His name is Tyan Young. Okay. He's going to be some great players in the future. Yeah, there's a lot of great kids coming up. Coach Stocker, you know that as well. as You work with all these young kids on the defensive side. Is there any other young kids that maybe you didn't mention that you think are some of the up-and-comers on this yeah, side? The defensive line of this side, we've, we've got a defensive end out of California as well. I was in Washington, another mm -hmm. really athletic guy that will continue to come on for us and next year he can shine. Uh, he had mentioned Cody Cole, a guy that has played this year as a freshman. I think will continue to grow really athletic. And we're still returning some guys like Victor Cave, uh, yeah. Jamar Randolph for another year. Mm -hmm. um, Cameron Fox is a guy, another mm -hmm. defensive end for us. Um, we got a handful of young DBs right now. Ethan Edwards and DeLon Wynn are also starting to play. Right. Um, but some young linebackers as well. Brandon Burks is a guy that's coming up as well, Ty and Young. Um, so we've got a nice group of younger guys to move forward, you know, obviously in the spring ball, but into next year. They have some youth, but some great athletes to help us. I think Willie tries to get you to let him do on the football field, and you got to be like, Willie, get it there on the Yeah, end. he wants to play tight end. He wants to play tight end? <laughs> yeah. He's got the size, but how are the hands? Yeah, no hands. That's, that's, no that's, hands. That's, that's, that's no the problem. Hands. Is there anything else, or is that he wants to get on the offense? He wants to get in the end zone is what it is. So it? We, had the, we had the real Willie in a little bit last year. Every down was pass. He wanted to do his rushing passer, <laughs> right? Which we know in this league, there's a lot of power football teams that yes, run the ball. Yes, there right? is. Yes, there is. This year, obviously, with the, you know what he's done in the offseason, he, he is a factor on every down. But there is no doubt that come third down, he's the guy we can cut loose, and we know we'll get something out of him. Yeah. Let's talk about your path to Tiffany University, because yes. you haven't been here all that awful long at two years. season now. Let's talk about your path to coming to Tiffany University. I finished up uh, my playing career at Kent State. I mm -hmm. uh, finished up playing there. I uh, ended up going back to uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I grew up. I okay. uh, ended up coaching in my high school uh, originally for a season. I uh, moved on to Oberlin College, Division three school. 
football side of Cleveland. I uh, was coaching linebackers and D-line there. Uh, spent a season and then came here. Uh, that would have been, what, 2000 and... 14? 14. 14. Um, as a defensive line coach, I've been here since. So definitely a young guy in the profession, you know, eager, hungry, but I've loved every step of it so far. What was it when uh, Coach, I don't know if you approached Coach Stocker, if he approached you? Because it's always interesting to hear these hear these stories of how these uh, coaching relationships come together. It's how about that work? It's a big fraternity for sure. Right. But, um, you know, after I hired um, Coach Edwards, you know, we were looking for a graduate mm-hmm. assistant. And, um, you know, he had been with Lee. Lee had actually played for Coach Edwards. And, you know, so we brought him in and, and talked with him. I liked him right away. And we, we brought him in as a GA. And he did an unbelievable job that spring. And I promoted him pretty fast, you know. So mm-hmm. he's been a full-time coach, you know, for three seasons now. And, you know, Lee works extremely hard. He's great with the players. You know, he's hard on them, which they need. Sure. You know, but the players appreciate that at the Tough end of love. the day. Tough <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, but, um, no, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have him. And, uh, you know, i got to have one of the best staffs in the country. That's for sure. Well, I enjoy working with all your coaches as well. Every time we get a chance to uh, sit down and talk with them here on the Gary Goff Show, it's always a pleasure getting to talk to these guys. And, uh, Willie, what do you think you're going to miss? I mean, you told us the thing that you – maybe the memory you're going to take with you is, you know, the relationships and stuff. But is there something else you're going to miss from, from this? Is there a certain player or something that you really sticks out in your mind that really sticks out to you? And you're, you think about it 20 years from now, you go think back, oh, yeah, there's that one time I did this, this, or the other. Man, I wish I could still be doing that. Well, I'm going to remember beating Hills, though, because last year I was going into that game was 100% healthy. And that was just honestly the worst game I played in my career. So getting revenge on them this year felt amazing because we worked all year. I worked all offseason to play that game and be more of a factor to what I think for my linebackers. We thought that some of, uh, some of the players and you know, were going to be looking at that game when we looked at the schedule after last year's result up there. And it was a very nice win for the Dragons. And the following week, last week, what they did to Michigan Tech was pretty impressive. The way you held their offense in check, and then they go and put 51 up on you at Michigan Tech. So it, makes you, it has to make you feel pretty good, not only get the win, but the way, in the style you got the win. Yes, oh, absolutely. And Willie's not done making memories. He's still got uh, no, I know. a lot yeah. more football games ahead of him. So. Yep, Ashland, this uh, coming week, this will be our fifth game of our, our schedule as we're almost approaching the halfway point. Willie, can you believe it's we're five games in the season already? I mean, you chomping at the bit to get there, and once you get there, it goes, doesn't it? It's flying by. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Coach, you got anything else for these two gentlemen? I know they get a chance to finish their meals, so they get a chance to get back over there out here at Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, you got anything else for them? If not, we'll go ahead and send them back. No, I'm excited to see both of them uh, work come Saturday. Yeah, Saturday afternoon, the kickoff's at 1.30, and uh, Willie and Coach uh, Lee Stocker, appreciate you guys uh, taking time out for us, and uh, always a pleasure getting to talk to you guys. Best appreciate of luck to you the rest of the way. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, Coach, it's always great to bring in these uh, coaches and student-athletes and talk to them here on the program, and uh, yeah, Coach Stocker is a guy who comes with some pedigree on the defensive side, and that always helps me make sure those kids listen to what the coach is saying. Oh, and he played the position in college and was very successful, and so you know, it, it is. It's great to have guys that have uh, either coached a position for a long time or played a position because they understand it. All right, this uh, has been Pink Week all over the place, and uh, this is uh, no different here on the Tiffany University campus, and I think there's some special things going on with the uh, football program come on Saturday, right? Yeah, you know, so it's, it's our pink game, obviously, and um, you know, we got a huge uh, banner up right now that all the players and, and coaches, faculty and staff are signing in honor of some of their loved ones that might have battled mm-hmm. or, or lost their battle to breast cancer, um, you know, but it's it's a it's a special game to a lot of us, a lot of our players that have lost some loved ones mm-hmm. to that. So, um, you know, we're going to have a moment of silence at the game in honor of those people. And, um, you know, the guys are all excited because we got the pink chrome helmets. Yeah, that's and, right. And I was going to ask if the pink and, skins uh, were going on the helmets today yeah, this so, weekend. Yeah, but no, but it's um, the game definitely has a little bit more meaning. And, uh, you know, there's more to life than just football, even though we forget mm-hmm. that sometimes. But at least the football games is going to bring people together for, right. for the cause on Saturday. So I guess that's a place one way or another, right? But you're absolutely right. Some things are bigger than sports, even though we all live and breathe and work sports. But you're right. Some things are bigger, but it is nice that a sport can bring everything together. As we said, the kickoff is 1.30 this Saturday at Frost County Isle Stadium the Dragons and the Eagles. You can catch our coverage beginning at 1230. The replay here at the Gary Goff Show. Then our local pregame show will begin at 1 o'clock as we get ready for coverage. All the action can be found at WTUD, which is TUDragonRadio.com. You can also catch free uh, audio at the TU mobile app, and you can always catch us on the air at Coast Country 100.9 FM WMJK. So, Coach, thank you so much for uh, for your time. I see Tyler's over there waiting on you, so go uh, spend some time with your family. and so, you know, uh, We always hear about the uh, you know, coaches 
coach's widow. You know, for, so take time, take some time, spend some time with your family while you can, and uh, we'll catch you on Saturday. Best of luck. Go get them. Hey, thank you. See you then. All right. His name's Coach Gary Goff. I'm Russell Snyder. This has been the Coach Gary Goff Show. Coming to you live from Buffalo Wild Wings right here in Tiffin. We'll catch you next time right here on the Tiffin University Dragon Radio Network.